Next test 12.2 was published uh, less than a month ago and they published this blog post about it and over here we can see all the changes that came with the new version of Next.js. So first we got the middleware and on-demand ISR out of beta, so they are stable now. Then we have the Edge API routes, Edge SSR and SVC plugins as experimental and then also some improvements to Next image. But in this video I want to focus on the first one over here, so the middleware, because it introduced some breaking changes uh, from the beta to the stable one. So in this video let's go through them and actually create a simple example on how to use the middleware now that it's stable. So I will just click this open and over here we have the details for the middleware changes. So as we know middleware allows us to run code before the request is completed and based on the incoming request we can modify or rewrite the uh, response, add headers, add cookies, etc. So there was a couple of changes in the middleware that we need to be aware of. So right here is the new syntax for the middleware and I think it actually is easier if we open up this migration guide for the middleware so we can actually see what what are the breaking changes. So right here we can see the breaking changes for the middleware updating to version 12.2. First of all we can no longer nest middleware so if we scroll down a little bit we can see right here that we will declare only one single middleware file where in previous version or in the beta we could have multiple middleware files nested in the folder structure and they would execute in that order but now we will only have one middleware file in the root of the project or as they say located next to the pages directory and one change also is that we don't need to prefix it with the underscore anymore and with this change the middleware will be also invoked for every route in the app so previously the middleware would only be invoked when a request was made to the given folder that the middleware file was located to but now that we have only one middleware, middleware file it will be by default executed on every request and we can add this config variable to match on specific routes so in that case this middleware will only run on the given paths that are defined in here and while this config approach is uh, preferred we can also use this if statements and check the path name of the urls in order to see what page we are opening and run custom logic based on the path name so this is one way also to just add the middleware for one or more specific routes and then the next major breaking change is that no response body is returned from middleware so in the beta we could return a body out of middleware and that way basically skip the API route if or a page so for example if we had middleware in front of an API route that returns some JSON we could just return that JSON from the uh, middleware instead of going to the API route so now that is no longer possible and if the middleware responds with the body a runtime error will be thrown and when we want to return a body we should now use rewrite or redirect to pages or APIs handling the response so right here is an explanation that these patterns will no longer work and right here we have a neat before and after shot so before we could do this inside of the middleware file so we could just return next set next response.json and then add the response body over here but now what we want to do is actually create a url and then redirect the request to that url and inside of this url in this case the slash login we would handle uh, returning the response body then there was still i think the cookies api revamped new user agent helper no more page match data and 
the execution of middleware on internal Next.js requests. So there are a couple of more changes still, but for this video, I think going through the first two in detail are, is the ideal way because those are the ones that most of the people are affected of. And for those, you actually have to do some changes right away in order to make your app work. So if you want to take a closer look on the rest of the changes, please feel free to check out the description. I'll leave a link for this in there. But now I think we could take a look on a very, very simple and fast example on how to use the new new middleware. Before we continue, I just want to say thank you to Data CMS for sponsoring this week's video. So if you're not familiar with Data CMS, it's a headless CMS and it's very user and especially developer friendly, which is of course, what I'm looking for from for headless CMS as a developer. And if you go to the datacms.com and hover over why data CMS, we can see for developers, there is a bunch of cool features that you can use. So first of all, they have GraphQL content API. So you can use GraphQL to talk with the headless CMS with your application. So with Next.js, that's super convenient, for example, to use the GraphQL API to fetching the content. Then other great thing as a developer is the structured text. And this is probably my favorite feature in data CMS. If we open it up, we can see that it's a smart way to store rich text content. And as we know, or at least I have run into many times in the problem that I need to store rich text content. And it's not that easy as it might sound, but with the rich text content in the data CMS, it's made super easy because you can modify the content with their editor inside the uh, CMS, and then you can get a JSON return. I think it was done here, yeah. So you get this nice JSON return for your content to the application. And you don't have to actually write some parser for this. That's not the case because they also have this data CMS React library available in NPM. And with this, you can do a bunch of stuff, but especially when we are talking about the structured text, there is this structured text component that you can import to your application, use it, and then just pass in the data that you get from the GraphQL API to the a component and it will handle all the heavy lifting and it will display your content just like that. You can start using data CMS for free. So if you have been looking for headless CMS to test out or use for some of your projects, I would highly recommend you give data CMS a shot because personally I really like it and I've used it on several projects. Thank you again data CMS for sponsoring this week's video. So I will just create a fresh Next.js project and open it up right now. So right here I have a fresh Next.js project open and I just typed in what our example should do. So first of all, we will create an API route that will use middleware to redirect the user to the index page. And it will also add this from middleware query parameter to the request. So in the index we can see that if the from middleware is true, then we will show a message that you are from middleware. And then if it's not true, so is, if it's not set or it's false, then it will just show a different message. So with this approach, we can have an example of the middleware, how it works, how you can match specific routes for the middleware and how you can modify the request inside the middleware. So let's start by adding the API route so for this API route, we actually won't ever go to the API route. So it can be just a copy of this hello API route. So I will rename it like this. And let's say that hello from redirector like this. So right now, if we start the server, let's just see that it's working and open up the application. And if I go to the API, slash redirect, we get the correct message. But at the end, we won't actually get here because the middleware will redirect us to the index page. But now we have the uh, like dummy 
redirect API route made. So next, let's create the middleware file. And as we learned, it needs to be next to the pages folder. So right here, I will create a new file called middleware. And note that I didn't add the underscore because now we don't no, we no longer need to add that. So in the middleware, first thing I'm going to do is import the next response like this. And then for the middleware file, we need to export the middleware function. So let's type that out like this. And then inside the middleware, we want to first modify the URL. So add the from middleware parameter to that URL. So modify URL. And then uh, last, we want to redirect the user to that URL. Like this. So we have two steps. So first, let's start by defining the URL that we want to redirect the user to. So that was the index page. So I will add a slash over there. Then we want to add the from middleware parameter to it. So we can do that by typing out url.searchparams. So we can use the search params to add that and then set and the name of the parameter, which is from middleware and the value is true like this. So now we have the URL ready. So only thing left to do is actually do the redirection. And we can do that by returning next response dot redirect. And as a parameter, we will pass in the URL we want to redirect the user to. So like this. So now we should have our middleware working. So let's just, I'll just boot the server and let's see if this works. So just to recap, we have only one middleware file and it will be applied to every request for this application. So all the pages, all the API routes, everything. So now if we open up the browser and we had the redirect API route previously returning this message, but now if we try to access this API route again, we get an error. So let's see, redirect is not a function. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot the curly braces when importing the next response. So let's add those, save it and try to access it again. So now we have the slash API slash redirect, try to open it. And we can see we go to the front page with the from middleware set to true in the search params. But now the page is not working. It's saying that uh, too many re redirects and that's because we are redirecting every route to the index page. So we are even redirecting the index page to the index page. So it will create an infinite loop. So what we we'll need to do next is add over here to the middleware the config variable in order to define that, hey, we want to only run this middleware for the uh, slash API slash redirect. So in that case, it, this middleware will only be run for that uh, route. So let's do that now. So I'll type in export const config equals and over here we will add the matcher and I'll use the array syntax so we can define multiple routes if we want. So, in, but in this case, we only have one, but I'll use it still. So we want this middleware to match the slash API slash redirect like this. So what this does now is that if the route matches the uh, slash API slash re redirect, it will run this middleware. So when we go to the index page, it won't match that, so it show, should show the index page. So let's just first go to the index page and we can see it works again. And now if we go to the API slash redirect, it goes to the, or it redirects us to the index page with this search parameter set over here. So that's great. Only thing left to do is just to 
add the message for it based on that uh, parameter. So I'll open up the index page and I will actually delete everything from the render method. Start fresh and then, then just return a div and over here, uh, before we do that, we need to actually define the get server side props so we can get the from middleware from the URL. So I'll type in export const get server side props equals and I'll use this syntax. So we want to get the query from there and then over here we want the query to pre be in the props. So I'll add props query like this. So now we should get the query as a prop and inside that query will be all the query parameters. So right here we can just say from middleware like this. So we destruct this from the query and inside here we can say that if from middleware is set then hello you came from middleware and if it's not set or false or something else than true then we will just say hello welcome like this so let's save it and switch to the index page so let's see I'll open up the front page it shows hello welcome and now if I go to the API slash redirect it adds the from middleware true parameter and it shows the text that hello you came from middleware so it looks like it's working so that's how you use the middleware now that it's stable and no longer in beta hopefully this video cleared some things up for you so it's easier to start using the middleware now that it's out of beta. I would really love to hear your thoughts about the new middleware and how it works now. So please do leave a comment below. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button also. It really helps out with the channel and the YouTube algorithm.